sir. Thank you. Thank you. No, 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 no. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, please, please, please. Save the Mutual Admiration Society for the comments section of the video. All right. God damn it! We're professionals here! And as a result, in tribute to one of the great comedic minds of this generation or any other, one of the great satirists and one of the great political minds of this generation, I decided to do this week's Raw Review in a bit of a Daily Show style. Now, some of you will get it and like it. Some of you won't get it and won't like it. And many more of you will take to the comments section without actually paying attention to, listening to, or commencing and any watching of this actual video itself. Well, I tell you what, knock yourselves out. It's a one-time deal. I hope you like it. Let's get started. So yes, Raw kicks off with the segment featuring Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. No authority in the opening promo segment. No Triple H or Stephanie talking for 15 or 20 minutes. Well, that was just saved until later on in the show. It spread out amongst multiple segments. But I digress. Nonetheless, here you've got a segment featuring two of your future young lions. Something that so many of us should want and proclaim that we want. The WWE is spotlighting the future. And it's all about the future and how bright the future looks with these young, fresh lions, these steeds, these stallions. Including in this segment, the hero to many a hardcore fan just like you, Seth Rollins. So how does the New Jersey crowd react? How does the New Jersey crowd respond? How does the New Jersey crowd show their appreciation, their admiration for this segment? By, of course, chanting for CM Punk. The same CM Punk who is now getting ready to fight for the UFC. The same CM Punk who walked out over a year ago on the WWE. And look, it's not to get into the whole thing about who's right, who's wrong. The bottom line is that CM Punk isn't here. He wasn't there and he's not going to be. He's not coming back. And furthermore, people, CM Punk seems to be fine with that. He is over that. Maybe, might I suggest, it's time for you to get over it too. Maybe it's time for you to hashtag deal with it, people. See, a puck is gone. He's not coming back anytime soon. Stop chanting for him during segments that don't involve him, where he's not mentioned, where he is not a factor whatsoever. Because this is not rebelling. This is not hijacking. This is not you making your voice heard. This is just you being stupid. That's exactly what this is, is it's being stupid. And what else would you expect out of the fine people of New Jersey? Oh, fine they are. I know they talk about New Jersey being the armpit of the U.S., but I think a lot of times it's more so the cancer of the Northeast. The New York wannabes. The New York wannabes who wouldn't really matter, frankly, if the New York teams didn't play a lot of their games there and didn't have their stadiums there. This is how stupid this whole CM Punk crap is, and something, of course, that I would only expect to come from New Jersey and well, many other arenas and many other cities and states all across the country because of the lack of intelligence, it seems like, at times, of certain professional wrestling fans. Would the New York Yankees fans chant Derek Jeter's name all through 2015 since he chose to walk away from the game, since he retired? No, that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Jeter made a decision to retire. Why the hell would you chant for his name all the time? It's great. He was there. Did incredible things. But he's gone. He's over it. It's time for the Yankee fans and the organization to move on and be over it too. Would Yankees fans be chanting for Derek Jeter if he decided to go leave in 2015 to go play for the Boston Red Sox because they were maybe giving him more years or more money on his contract? No, that makes absolutely no freaking sense. Would the New York Yankees fans, let's say, chant for Derek Jeter's name if he decided he wanted to quit playing baseball and go play basketball? Or quit playing baseball and go play for, let's say, the New York Knicks? Notice I didn't say the New York Knicks were playing basketball because God knows they haven't resembled a basketball team in freaking years. You can take that one and stick it in your pipe and smoke it. This whole shit with chanting CM Punk is old. It's played out. CM Punk is over it. It's time you get over it, too. So apparently The Miz has himself a little bit of a problem. I don't know, maybe it's French blondes aren't doing it for him anymore. But here's what I know, that this is what the kids want to see. This is what the families click on their TVs to see. This is what the kids and the families go to the arenas and pay money to see, is half-naked men talking about erectile dysfunction. 
And what's crazy about it is this was one of the funniest segments and one of the most entertaining segments of the entire night. It would be sad if it wasn't so true. And what's even more sad is the fact that here you've got Miz and you've got Miz Dow and you've got many, many reasons pointing to why these two deserve a solo one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania. They have earned that spotlight. They deserve that spotlight. So instead of giving them the solo match that is required, justified, if not flat out deserved, we're going to group them into the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania because now we're going to use that Battle Royal as a lazy kind of kickback fallback device to not work as hard. Is there anything for the excitement dysfunction that many of us are going to suffer heading into WrestleMania 31? Can they do any commercials about that? Can anybody come up with a product to solve our excitement dysfunction? And most importantly of all, can anybody create a product that will help assist with the WWE's creative dysfunction? So apparently we found out that Bray Wyatt is still stuck in 1998. Oh, wow. Let's light a casket on fire. Oh, my goodness. And it's all about the mystery of where the Undertaker is and if he's going to have the courage to show his face. Well, for me, the only real mystery of this is why anyone would care. Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker WrestleMania 31 is a eloquated so appropriately on this show before, on this channel before, is a lose-lose situation for all parties involved. If Taker wins... Bray Wyatt loses. If Bray Wyatt wins, Bray Wyatt loses. If Bray Wyatt wins, Taker loses. It's no good. No bueno. I do give credit to one thing, though, to The Undertaker. He's taking special attraction to a whole new level. He's got Brock Lesnar jealous. The only way to become an even bigger special attraction is to not show up ever at all. And now we wonder whether or not we're even going to see The Undertaker at WrestleMania 31. Now that's how you get it done. Get yourself a seven-figure payout for making one appearance and wrestling one mediocre 15-minute match at the biggest show of the year. So, of course, coming to suck the life out of everything involving the show quicker than a Dino Bravo weightlifting segment is John freaking Cena. Well, first thing I gotta say is, Stephanie, somebody's been watching a certain channel. Everything you said was true. It was genius. It was like it was oratory coming straight from a genius's mouth. Just saying. What I don't understand, though, is why Stephanie would be giving Rusev any booking power. You're determined to not have Cena wrestle at WrestleMania. You're the one in charge. Why would you not just say no and that be the end of it? Why would you sit there and put that power in somebody else's hands? The authority, the stupidest faction in pro wrestling history from a pure intelligence standpoint. If you go back and look at it, it's true. Oh, but wait, there was more. Here's Axelmania running wild. Here's Curtis Axel trying to get over. How cute. Uh, and the funny thing is, is Axelmania is kind of running semi-wild. It's actually even cuter. You know, with all the crap he's talking about, the fact he still hasn't been eliminated from the 2015 Royal Rumble, it's true. You know, Nobody's going out and trying to throw him over the top rope. You could say Dean Ambrose did, but that doesn't count. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. But what's cutest of all is that WWE finds a little bit of something and gets something that gets at least a little bit of attraction and tries to get a guy over just to feed him to the Cena monster. Well, how cute is that? And after this debauchery, after this ridiculousness, here comes Rusev and Lana straight back from a house hunting adventure in Nashville. Run away and hide, Rusev. You don't want any of this. You don't want the Cena monster at WrestleMania, I assure you. Your answer now should stay this. No, no, no. Punch him in the Putin and run. Run away. Go to some interior design convention, some home improvement convention out in the Nashville area. Do whatever you want. But you don't want this. We don't want this. You don't need this. We don't need this because we all know where this is going to head come WrestleMania 31. It's going to be a place we really don't like. Rusev, your services may be required in the Ukraine. Go there. Your services will not be required in Santa Clara, California, at Levi Stadium at WrestleMania 31 on March 29, 2015. If you go, don't blame us. Don't say that I didn't try to warn you. Well, I had to know that at some point in time, God was going to make his presence known because, well, as Paul Heyman alluded to later on in the night, you know, he's booking the show, which we already knew anyways, 
But God's got to get himself a 15-minute promo segment on a show. It just wouldn't feel like Monday Night Raw full of jam-packed action if we didn't have Triple H grinding everything to a screeching halt with his mouthpiece. Well, he did it here again. Bravo, sir! Bravo! Praise God! Job well done. And as soon as he called Booker T into the ring, I'm like, well, this is going to be bad. Because nothing could possibly go wrong with Booker T getting in the ring with Triple H, right? I mean, frankly, when has being in the ring with Triple H ever benefited Booker T in any way, shape, or form? If Triple H is calling you into the ring, Booker T, why the hell wouldn't you cut tail and run back to Houston to go be with Charmel and your twins? Go do your reality and wrestling stuff. You don't want any part of this, and you should know this, and you should know better. But apparently this is how they promote content on the WWE Network now. We're going to hype up Booker T's uh, little mini documentary by pretending to fire him here for whatever the fuck reason. It just felt like a colossal waste of time. Just like the WWE always tries to make it seem like WCW and everything involved with WCW was a waste of time. Well, quickly, quickly, this feud becoming between Triple H and Sting is becoming a waste of time. And it seems like that match at WrestleMania 31 is indeed going to be a waste of time. I think we all knew that this Divas title match had one singular purpose, and that was to be the point where the Jersey girl, AJ Lee, came back to the WWE. And I'm sure this has got a lot of you excited now. Oh, it's so cute how they sit there and reference give Divas a chance after the match and the running backstage. And now the dynamic duo of Paige and AJ Lee are back together again. And surely this led to all types of increased instances of masturbation-related injuries amongst internet and hardcore wrestling fans. But at the end of the day, the WWE still doesn't care about the Divas division. They still don't care about the Divas, which leaves me asking you the question of why the hell at that point in time should you give a damn about the Divas or the Divas division. So now basically Ambrose can't even have his own shtick and keep it. Everybody else has got to get involved in the action. Everybody else has got to take away from him. And basically everyone matters except the IC champion. You've got Dean Ambrose pinning Wade Barrett once again. Fucking A. Wade Barrett's letting everyone have a turn. You could start calling him the Kelly Kelly of IC champions. Holy Christ almighty. And for all of you that wanted this, well, I guess you're going to get it. You're going to get Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania. I tried to tell you, I tried to warn you that you didn't want this. So now for those of you that thought you wanted this or think that this is going to be awesome, I hope you're happy with what you got because that's exactly what it looks like you're going to get. So let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. Everyone matters except the IC champion, and that's going to increase the prestige of the belt somehow. Uh, you've got the guy who got the ultimate victory for Team Cena at Survivor Series, and the guy who main evented WrestleMania 30 and damn near came this close to main eventing this year's WrestleMania at well, going into an IC title ladder match that also features the most forgettable U.S. champion in history in Dean Ambrose, a pointless former IC champion in Luke Harper, a pointless current IC champion in Wade Barrett, and the guy who stopped Bo Dallas' streak, who for whatever reason, and I can't still figure out, maybe he's on his way fucking out, so they're giving him one last run here, and our truth is involved in the freaking match, and I'm sure they're going to throw a couple of more in here and make this one big suck fest. No, I don't give a damn how much they try to spot best fool your asses into thinking this is anything good. This is bullshit. This is ridiculous. This is not how you make stars. This is not how you sit there and make this IC title more meaningful. This is not how you feature Daniel Bryan in a big freaking way. This would be like after WrestleMania 4 where Macho Man wins the title in the main event. He comes back at WrestleMania 5 for Christ's sake and he wrestles the Red Rooster. This would be like the Ultimate Warrior wrestling the title at WrestleMania 6 against Hogan, beating Hogan, and then the next year at WrestleMania 7, he's facing off against the Berserker. Ha! 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 Can anybody else see how ridiculous this is? Can anybody else see how stupid this is? One of your most over guys in the WWE today, Daniel Bryan, and this is what you've relegated him to. An afterthought in a match for an afterthought of a belt. One segment that I had a feeling was going to be gold was this Daily Show segment with Seth Rollins trying to rip off our hero, Jon Stewart. This was, beyond question to me, the best segment of the night. 
And it's quite sad, honestly, when the comedian, the political satirist, uh, cuts it, what in my mind was the best wrestling promo of the night. How sad is that that John Stewart, the comedian, is the one to be taken most seriously when it comes to WWE? Well, it's kind of like how sad it is that a comedian like him is one of the ones you should take most seriously when it comes to political talk in this country. Now, leave it, of course, to the WWE to do this years too late. Instead of having Jon Stewart being involved, let's say, at WrestleMania 29, um, you know, when WrestleMania was in that New York, New Jersey area where Jon Stewart is from, where he films The Daily Show, the WWE waits until two years later, 2015, when Jon Stewart is on his way out from his freaking show. And instead of involving him in a big angle or a big happening at WrestleMania itself, you do this and blow your load on a freaking Raw. Well, it was what it was. It was the nutshot scene around the world. So the WWE got at least a little bit of mainstream attention for this, and that's all fine and good. And Jon Stewart did a good job with what he did here. But let me get this straight now. We're going to go from a legend like Jon Stewart to next week you're going to have Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, because that's no way, shape, or form possibly going to suck at all, right? So, of course, since equality for the gender and the races is ingrained in the very fiber and being of the WWE and their corporate business model. The WWE made the announcement this week of a diva being a part of their 2015 WWE Hall of Fame class. And hey, it's Alondra Blaze, Medusa, Whoopi, and most of the people watching say, who? Well, there's a reason why. Frankly, for all the talk about her, the most notable thing she ever did was in WCW. And that was, mind you, after the WWE cut the women's division at a time where the company in general was struggling and the women's division just really didn't matter, just like most things evolving the WWE didn't matter. With that said, though, I don't want to hate on Alondra Blaze too much. I mean, because, frankly, she still did more than Sunny. More significant to me than Sunny. Therefore, she deserves a place in the WWE Hall of Fame as a diva. Um, and of course, and she did a lot more than Sonny, unless you're talking about the number of dicks sucked and fucked. And then in that case, Sonny deserves her own wing of the WWE Hall of Fame. You know when Paul Heyman comes out to talk on Raw, people are going to listen. And you usually know him more often than that because he is one of the very best mouthpieces in the wrestling business today, if not arguably the best. And every time he opens his mouth, people are going to be falling over themselves in love and admiration of the great Paul Lee Heyman. And let me guess, he did a work shoot. You all loved it. You thought it was great. You thought it was awesome. Well, work shoots aren't always good. And we want to talk about being stuck in the fucking late 90s. To me, a lot of times with Paul Heyman, when it comes to his promos and his style, he's stuck in the late 1990s and damn so. Just because it's a work shoot, that doesn't make it good. If anything, it makes it a crutch and a lazy thing to do. How about cutting a really good effective promo without having to use this type of crap? Let me guess, there's going to be some of you that are going to be speculating about, oh my God, why did Paul Heyman have his mic get cut out? Oh my God, what is this going to mean? What's the story going to be behind that? It's not going to mean a whole lot of a hell of a any damn thing. Where did that go with CM Punk when they did it in 2011? What point was there to that? What ended up happening exactly? So what does it mean with Paul Heyman? Who knows? Who fucking cares? And whoopee! Brock Lesnar's going to do whatever the hell he wants, which is usually not show up on Raw or at a pay-per-view. But we do know now, at least, according to Paul Heyman, that Brock Lesnar is going to bother to be at WrestleMania. Well, he might as well be, because, I mean, it's not like he's there any other time, so... What else does he really have to do? He might as well collect his seven-figure payout and then leave and go do whatever the fuck else he wants to do. Uh, he's not bothered to be there any other time, so why not now? I mean, Brock does whatever he pleases. I, I guess that's the whole nature of the thing. We're going to find out what Brock chooses to do come that main event of WrestleMania 31. And oh my God, how incredible, how controversial. Paul Heyman said that Brock Lesnar was going to Ronda Rousey Roman Reigns. Yeah, so let's reference the fight that 500,000 people paid to see on pay-per-view on a show that about 4 million people watch. Oh my god, he mentioned UFC and one of their fighters on WWE, that means they're going to war. Oh, what a bunch of bullshit. And I'll have to admit, I was at least looking forward to a little bit this main event match between Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. I, I was fine with this. But my thing is, is why not have Rollins win without the help? 
Is there anything wrong with that? I mean, he is the Money in the Bank winner. He could very well be world champion as soon as WrestleMania 31 or shortly thereafter. Why can't you build him up a little bit? And then at the same point in time, not have Reigns look like such a monster. Or why not have Rollins lose without the help and tell a bit of a story there? where he still puts up a competitive fight, Reigns just happens to be a little bit better, and maybe people don't hate him all that much. Well, people are going to bitch about Roman Reigns regardless, so it really doesn't fucking matter. Instead, with Seth Rollins, the WWE does with what they do with so many of their heels, especially those that are aligned with the power or authority figures, the ones in charge, they have them win with the same type of help that they always get. And I guess apparently the WWE has decided the best way to get the interest simmering and burning, if you will, for this Seth rollins Randy Orton match that we're assuming is still going to take place at WrestleMania 31 is for there to be no burn at all. None whatsoever. I don't know what the hell the WWE is doing here, and I can't think of a reason why the WWE thinks this is the good way to go. Please tell me why this is a good idea. Please tell me why this is anything other than counterintuitive and counterproductive. At least, if anything else here, Reigns doesn't go over, and Reigns gets to showcase some of the things that he does, including that incredible dead man dive over the top rope, which I believe some people were talking about his botching. How the fuck did he botch it? Did he hit the ropes? Did he land on the top of his fucking head? No! He ran across the ring, he jumped over the top ropes, and landed on a bunch of people! If Dolph Ziggler does that, you talk about how that's great promotional fucking! Roman Reigns didn't botch that, damn! It was a good athletic showcase, though, for Roman Reigns. He doesn't win, but he still comes out looking like a bit of a winner here. But at the end of the day, this segment fell flat. And this Raw, to me, in a lot of ways, fell flat. Because... The WrestleMania 31 and this road to WrestleMania 31 is ultimately falling flat. I'm assuring you again, WrestleMania 31 is going to be a forgettable night, a forgettable event. What a shame it is. What a shame it is. But that's exactly what it is. You're going to remember Raw for one thing this week and one thing alone, and that's Jon Stewart.